son, my son got me this cool firebox stove for Christmas. It's a little collapsible wood stove, wood burning stove, that you take camping. So, an intriguing way to use this stove is to create what's called a uh, Swedish torch. And that's sticks that are placed on the vertical inside the box. So I'm going to cut some hardwood to go in there and I'm going to use it camping out right over there. I'm going to use it to uh, cook my food tonight. So first of all let's measure because there are some little tongs that go, little pieces of metal that go in here that hold your pot at this height. So we don't really want the wood right up there. We want the wood right about down there. So that's well, it turns out it's exactly as long as the teeth on this saw. Let's go find a little bit of wood and cut it up. This big old branch fell off an oak tree up there. And I think I see exactly what I need. Right there. Look at that. This saw is made by Silky. Super sharp. In fact, you have to be careful with it, but it's great for cutting firewood. Nice. Nice dry oak. Okay. We said the length of the teeth will be right here. I think that'll do it. Let's go check it out in the firebox. Height's perfect. Well, one of them wound up a little long. But it'll do. We really could use another one right in the center but that's where we want the fire to be too so if we put these together maybe I can break some smaller sticks to go around the edges well we have the wood box loaded so now I'm going to go get something uh, very combustible to lay on top here create a little mound of a fire that will burn its way in and should start up the Swedish torch all right, let's find out if this works. Well, given the arrangement of wood in a uh, Swedish torch fire setup, raises the interesting question about how to light it. There's really no good way to get in from the bottom. So the first thing I'm gonna try and do is take a bunch of this very dry, dead pine. You can always find growing on the low part of a white pine tree. and creating a small fire on top that I'm hoping will find its way down It's very cold out today. It's about 35 degrees right now, January the 8th. A lot harder to get fires going in the cold. No surprise. The theory is, as this, as the twigs on top begin to burn, 
and create coals. The coals will fall down in between the large sticks that we collected and ignite the smaller oak sticks, which should eventually ignite the larger. I can see the fire beginning to reach into the center of the pile already. So let's switch from pine to oak kindling. Should create a longer lasting hotter coal. You can see the coals are beginning to get into the center of the uh, logs now. Not a lot of them, but um, it's beginning to burn. We'll see where it goes from here. All right, we're about 15 minutes into it, and uh, there's, a, there's a fire going down there. I don't know if the oak, I don't think the oak logs are really burning yet. Oh yes, they are. All right, this is ice cold water you just saw me pull out of the pond. Those fully dried oak logs don't appear to be burning very well without some vigorous blowing on them. There's a fire in there, but I don't know if it's going to sustain itself. Well, we'll see if we can get this pot boiling before it goes out. Happy to say the fire is still going, and it's 100% from the uh, from the four large oak logs that we put in there at this point. None of the other wood that we put in is still in. Well, I guess there are a few coals in there to burn, but most of it's all coming from the uh, from the few large logs we put in. There's a good fire under the pot. I can see a little bit of steam beginning to come out. Be looking for a boil soon.
Well, there you go. We've got a nice boil. We pulled the water from the pond, so uh, we'll boil a little bit. Pond water has some color in it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not dirty. It's just tannin. Same thing that makes tea and coffee dark. Just stains from nature leaching out of dead leaves, pine needles. Some of that tannin came from over a mile away in a big swamp. You can see once the Swedish torch gets going with some good dry wood, it creates quite a fire. Now, given the thickness of those logs, I think that's going to be burning for quite a while, at least another 30 minutes. So I like it. I'd say this firebox stove is a, uh, it's a success and that method of, uh, of having fire in it looks to be adequate for both heat, it's nice and warm, and a lot of cooking. Maybe even a little more flame than you need, but it's nice and clean. Very little smoke. That's a gift from my son for Christmas. Thanks, Ben. We'll finish up with a short walk around of the firebox with the Swedish torch inside. You can see there's quite a hot fire in there, rich red coals, and plenty of fuel left in that wood. We've already brought one pot of water to a boil. Could have done another two or three in the time since that first pot was ready. Certainly could keep cooking for a while. Plenty of heat to do freeze dried meals for three or four people. The nice thing about the fire is it's not too big, although it's very warming. I could have this under a tarp with no worries about the flames reaching up and hurting the tarp. Boy, wouldn't that be nice on a cold day camping. This method has my vote. It takes longer to start, but it's worth the work. Have a great camping trip.